Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for part 3 of the Tamiya Skyline build. It's another stinking hot day as it has been, I think we're up to about 2 months now literally with no rain. Um, and I'm really not enjoying it. So, where we get to last time was some bits chopped off the sprues, cleaned up, sanded up and ready for paint so I'll show you where I've got to so I got a bit carried away and did a bit more so I'll take the box lid out of the way firstly got the body primed and needs a little bit of uh, cleaning up where I uh, well it's mainly down to the heat having issues with spraying so there's a few bits that need sanding and a few seam lines that need a bit tidied up and that will be okay got the wing primed up as well that looks alright the chassis primed and I sprayed the underside in silver it's supposed to be blue but hey I prefer the look of it silver and then I Sprayed up and painted up the front end, the engine and transmission, and the suspension and brakes. I'll bring it up a bit closer, you'll be able to see what I've done with the brakes. And I'll do exactly the same thing on the rear brakes and the rear gearbox, so we'll have all that covered and the rear suspension. So let's get started with a bit of painting first, shall we? Let's start out with the brake discs. So we're going with, oh, what did I use? It's gun metal and steel, I believe. Yes, uh, a very non-English summer and uh, I've had enough of it. I can't wait for it to rain or thunder or anything other than being hot, dry, humid and just generally horrible. As I said, I'm, I'm one of those who didn't complain overly when it was cold and wet, so... or snowy and horrible, so... I'm allowed to complain about the heat. Um, I have actually ordered the paint for this and it'll the blue that is and that'll be here in a couple of days. So I'll hopefully be able to plow on and get this done because um, since finishing the night and with this being a video build I've not really done much in the way of modelling lately and I'm kind of missing it I mean the weather's not helping it being so blooming hot up here um, admittedly not as hot as some people's caves have been although not that much cooler um, but yeah we'll get there it can't be sunny much longer surely I mean we are getting some cloud coming through now and I know what other parts of the country have had rain it's just well I mean even areas a couple of miles away have had rain um, not a huge amount of it but I've had some it's been absolutely bone dry here I even saw a picture the other day taken from space you know, from um, either a satellite or some such. And you can see <laughs> there was a before and after. How England looked before all the heat waves. Or, well, technically one heat wave. It's just been going on a long time. And now, and it's gone from a lovely verdant green colour to mainly brown. It's a... Uh, it's not a lot enjoying the weather, uh, apart from the 
bugs and the flies and a lot of horse flies around this year. Fortunately they tend to leave me alone, it's more the mosquitoes that try to eat me. Um, I guess I've not got the right flavour as it were. Chuck some paint on the back of the discs. I'm doing the discs themselves in this gunmetal colour because I'm not entirely sure if the real one has carbon or carbon ceramic or steel discs or what, but you know. This is me, I don't check references for everything, I just make it up as I go sometimes and go with what looks good to me. Let's be honest, when it comes down to it, I'm the one that's got to look at it. So, I'm the one that's got to look visually appealing or aesthetically pleasing for. No, it's, uh, say that but you know long term this is me so it's probably got a year or 18 months maybe two years before it gets meets the old uh, hammer of fate and uh, goes off to landfill but hey you can't have everything. If I kept everything I'd built, I wouldn't have any room in the house at all. So it's a case of needs must. And to be perfectly honest, I don't believe most of my models are probably even worth the hassle of trying to sell on eBay. And I've I've had my fun out of them. So I've got my money's worth. It's a bit of a touchy subject for some, but to me, I've paid for it, or it's been bought for me as a present. And the enjoyment I get is the building, and sometimes the painting. Once that's done with, it basically just becomes, well, Something you look at every once in a while and go, oh yeah, I forgot I built that. At the best of times, to the rest of the time a dust magnet. Perfectly honestly. It's um There's very little inherent worth in what they in what models actually are. It's just what people might be willing to pay for them. And as I said, I just can't be bothered with the hassle. Oh. Shaky, 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 shaky. Shake the paint. So we've done um, gun metal and steel. And now we're going to do the brake calipers in, well, it's uh, brass, but close enough to gold. And it then means that the top part of the yeah, teeth in sharp, the front part of the caliper in gold, and it will stand out a little. And if it's visible through the wheels, that is, and it may well not be. And strangely, the rear brakes have got AP moulded into them, and the fronts didn't. So, yes. I'd assume it's running the same brakes all round, APs, rather than Brembo's at one end and APs at the other. But 
And that could cause some interesting handling characteristics, I guess. Different types of brake. Well, they work slightly differently. I mean, no, overall, they slow you down, but when it comes down to it, they have different feels and different, uh, yeah, just different feel, different way of slowing. Some will be all of a sudden, what? Stop. Others will come in more smoothly. All depends on what you're looking for, really, I guess. There is a lot more detail on these rear uh, calipers. Hi, hi. As I say, I'll paint it, but yeah, it's probably not going to be remotely visible once it's assembled. Especially the insides. The outsides are just about to be visible through the wheels. So let's get this one done. the brakes are painted. All these dry thoroughly. Well, in this weather that could be as little as five minutes um, <laughs> at most. And then uh, I will go back and pick out the details up by the slots in the discs with black ink just to make them stand out a little more the fronts of the calipers with a brighter gold and probably the various bolts as well just to add a little more visual interest and possibly pick out the AP logo with a contrasting colour so that's that. Clean out the brush again. Quick suck. Right, Ooh, what do we do next? Do we paint the dampers? Yes, while I have the silver out, I'll paint the dampers. Why well, not? If not, or the steel, sorry. Not the trickiest of jobs. Yeah, it's a uh, so I was just trying to think of something to talk about here. This, uh, Painting springs and dampers isn't exactly it's something that needs discussion about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, I'm literally daubing silver paint all over the bits. I want silver or red. So I will pick the springs out in probably red like I've done on the front. Again, for what is likely to be visible is bugger all. Um, but hey, it's nice to just take the extra couple of minutes, add a little more detail. You know, it's there even if nobody else has a clue. It's one of those things you get used to doing it, and it becomes easier and. And when you have to do it on something where it is going to be visible, you're not so worried about it. You just go, oh, right, I'll do that then. So, right, there we 
go. That's the silver on nose. And while we're waiting for that to dry, let's have a look at this body shell, shall we? Pop the paint out of the way, just so we don't go splat. We have a nice low low grit sander. Because there is a slight lip on the back of the boot as it were, so we just take that off. Is one of the uh, fine grit thinny, thinny sticks is the 800 I think it's the finer grit of the thinny sticks anyway rather than uh, not the buffer I need to give it a go over with the buffer just to make sure it's smooth and clean So that's that seam line taken care of. There is a slight edge around that side. I think needs taken down a little as well. Nothing too serious. We just back to try and get smooth flush join lines on the boot here or trunk I know it's probably annoying that I keep saying boot trunk wing spoiler um, or whatever the various Hood, bonnet, wing, fender, you know, all the various different Americanisms, but not necessarily all of our American friends know all of the or uh, from other countries even know the English versus the American. Two cultures separated by an identical language, basically. Um, it's something I've also noticed when I'm talking to non-native English speakers, and I do include Americans in that. They do sometimes struggle with our local dialects and accents. Um, Different things get called different things in different parts of the country because it may be a piddly small little country but there's a lot of peoples in it and a lot of history and it's all started out as different tribes really. Now here I'm not necessarily sanding these surfaces, it's just Knocking them back, making sure they're smooth. No raised surfaces, you know, no uh, high points or nasties in the paint that we're going to need dealing with at a later date. Any doors? There's a little bit around there. It's just some. No. Minor imperfections caused by, well, a spraying probably too heavy, um, and b just the weather conditions. Paint is drying so quickly, it's unreal. Uh, um, even the UMP Steinol res 
it basically didn't get a chance to self level before it dried. And basically, by the time I'd finished spraying the primer, where I'd, where I'd started, it was all dry. It all and I don't mean just looked dry, it was dry. <laughs> and I don't take my time spraying. I tend to go quick and quick and dirty. Kind of explains most of my modelling really, quick and dirty. It's um, why do it the hard way when you can do it the easy way? Uh, front end doesn't need anything. We do have a high point just around the wing mirror. Machine. That's where the wing mirror mounts anyway, so we'll just smooth that off. Surprising amount of cat hair around here, considering I don't own a cat. No. My little buddy's in the doghouse at the moment. I say he's the neighbour's cat, but he's my little buddy. I'm his pet human. Um, no, for some reason he decided to spray up the curtains the other day, so he's not in my good books. He got told off. Right. Now what I'll do with that is give that a wipe over with a damp cloth. Lint free cloth so you don't leave anything behind. Oh, there's another bit on the boot lid there. And that's got it. And then give it another coat of primer where I've gone through it. Then what I'll probably do is give it a coat of silver of some description, aluminium or steel or whatever. Just so the blue pops a bit better than it would over the black primer. Just brightens things up a little. Oh dear, excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Been one of those days, I'm afraid. A bit windy. Windy Miller. So, just get the springs painted and then I'll call it it for this episode. Uh, so, again, it's just a red paint. Don't worry about the colour or exactitudes of it, it's not and heck if you prefer blue springs or yellow springs or silver or whatever just go for it so there's not a huge amount of deal or uh, deal detail with the uh, I mean, you've got no engine to speak of. There's not a huge amount of interior or suspension, really. So, just picking out a few extra details here and there makes it just stand out a little more, pop a little more. And the 
road will stand out against the uh, blue of the body shell. There's one. And the other. And try and figure out what we'll be up to next time. Well, next time I hope to have most of this back end together and everything underside wise at least painted so that I can then just start actually assembling something so it starts to look like a car. There we go. Um, as I say, I'll be getting the underside assembled. So where it stands the next time you see it, it might be. I say it might be as far along as all the underside in. I think it's um, yeah the rad that rear end exhaust all that kind of stuff going on um, and the top of it the uh, cockpit cockpit <laughs> yeah it shows I don't build many cars in it cockpit the uh, interior painted blue the same color as the shell will be. Um, and the shell ready for its blue and oh I'm, I might even show you how I decant paint messily indoors and dangerously so there we go have fun enjoy your modelling peace out rock on and bye bye